Bring in Tom Verducci, great baseball writer for Sports Illustrated. And uh, maybe you can make some sense of this, uh, of what's going on in Seattle with uh, Jay-Z and his negotiations with Robinson Cano. Is this for real, what Seattle is offering? And was it for real, what Jay-Z was asking for? Well, it's for real what Seattle's offering. I mean, you, you, there's nothing wrong with asking for money, and it looked like Jay-Z was really pushing it, asking for more years and money when Seattle, you know, first of all, Dan, when you bring in the agent and the player for a face-to-face meeting and travel across the country, as happened in Seattle Thursday night, that you know, that means you, that you're farther down the road than just, hey, let's knock on the door and see what they're offering here. And I think Seattle thought they were able to close the deal within 24 to 48 hours, and it sounds like Kenosai came in asking for more money. But I think that tells me that they've reached a breaking point here, that Seattle basically said, this is what we've got for you. If you want a deal, here it is. And, and I think he may take the deal, to be honest with you. Because right now, Seattle is about $50 million ahead of the Yankees in the bid. That is a lot of money. That's the reason why Albert Pujols left uh, St. Louis. You get to the point where the difference is large enough that you start to think, you know what, this team wants me more than the team I've played with for the last 10 years. So nine years, 225, Cano, does that sound right? It sounds right. I mean, I think it's going to be in that ballpark. I mean, there's only been two players in baseball history that got 225 plus, and that's Alex Rodriguez, did it twice, and and Pujols. And Robbie Cano is going to be able to stand up there and say he's in that rarefied air, uh, and he's also in Seattle. (laughs) Oh, it's such a bad deal. It's a bad deal well, for Seattle. Yeah, I, I mean, I, you can't blame the player in this case, no, though, Dan. No. I, I know, you know, playing for the Yankees, the history there, going forward, uh, you know, what you mean in Yankee history, especially when it looks like Alex Rodriguez, Derek Jeter, you know, they don't have many years left of Medi, uh, and he would become the guy in, in New York. But, you know, again, I think the signals came to Cano during this whole thing. The Yankees weren't going beyond 170. And here they were overspending for Jacoby Ellsbury, a guy who's had one good, one really, really good season in his career. And Cano has put up seven great seasons for the Yankees, and they're playing hardball with Cano. I'm not saying they did the wrong thing. I can see from the player's point of view, though, you start thinking, this other team wants me more. It's Tom Verducci of Sports Illustrated joining us, Dan Patrick Show. I didn't like the Ellsbury deal either. You know, a speed guy at, you know, over the age of 30, and I know he'll be better in that ballpark and that short porch. It's better than, you know, that so-called short porch in right field at Fenway. Uh, great defender and, uh, you know, stealing bases. But that kind of money? I, and we did the math here, Tom, that if they pick up the option for the final year of his contract in New York, that contract will be worth more than what Mariano Rivera got in his, uh, in his career. It'd be about the same that Rivera got for his entire career in New York. Yeah, it's it's crazy when you look at the contract because, you know, he's now the third highest paid player, outfielder, in baseball history, which is crazy <laughs> for a guy who's not going to hit in the middle of your order. Now, that being said, it's a great player to add to the Yankees. I mean, their offense was terrible last year. They had the worst production in the American League at four different positions in the batting order last wow. year. And Ellsbury's going to help them. And, yeah, at the end of the contract, you're going to say, man, that contract is too long. But for a team that lost, uh, you know, didn't get into the postseason last year, they had their worst winning percentage in 21 years, uh, and the TV ratings are down. If this team needs to get back to the postseason. Ellsbury will help them get there, and they'll worry about seven years from now, seven years from now. The Danettes looked at me like I was crazy when I brought this up, that the Yankees are – they build a TV show. It's a reality show. It's, it's just <laughs> called baseball. But they do want good-looking players that, that, you know, you have A-Rod and you have Jeter. You, now I, I bring in Ellsbury. D- does that play a role at all with the Yankees? Or am I crazy in thinking that? Well, I'm not quite sure what you mean by good-looking, but they do need marketable players. And I think when people saw this team even two years ago when it was in the postseason, it was really missing those kind of players that you wanted to go to the ballpark to watch. And one of the arguments, and I don't think this is truly entirely fair, with Cano, the Yankees were, you know, when Jay-Z is saying, you know, he's Michael Jordan, you know, he's a superstar player, transcendent. And the Yankees were saying, well, wait a second. You know, there was no Jeter last year, essentially. There was no A-Rod, essentially, last year. And our attendance went down. The team was lousy. And Robinson Cano was the star player on the team. Um, but, yeah, they, I think because of the network, because of the prices they charge for their tickets, 
they do need a really attractive team with superstar players. There's no <laughs> question about that. All right, so I'm not crazy. You're not crazy. I mean, listen, it's not the defining reason. I mean, Ben Affleck's not going to be playing second base for the Yankees next year. No, but, uh, no. it helps. <laughs> uh, thank you, Tom. Have a good weekend. You got it, man. All Thanks. right, Tom Berducci, Sports Illustrated. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.